we're going to be looking at the chapter called Master of Programming. So, do you know the computer understands instructions? How do you do, you Dr. Main Unit, how do you do? Dr. Monitor told me your experiences while traveling around the world. It's Okay, so what are programming languages used for? Let's take a closer look. So we humans begin uh, beings and computers have our own sets of languages. When we use a wide range of vocabulary in our communications, um, the latter uses combinations of zeros and ones only. The, to enable communications between us is important to talk a common language. Programming languages are thus invented. So we use programming languages, the computers understand our instructions and help us solve our problems. So what does that mean? So zero and ones, it's very simple. A computer um, can be in, uh, or part of a computer can be in two states. It can either be on or off. There is no uh, other way and a uh, normal computer. And so what you do is you have lots of on and off switches all together, all working. And in different combinations, they provide different instructions. So we can see here, we've got a language of add to, uh, two to the product of two add three. Now the actual coding product will be uh, output two plus two star uh, asterisk three. So high uh, level and low level programming languages. So early programming languages preserve much uh, properties of the computer's language. They are known as low level programs um, and are difficult to learn and write. While the development of the computer program languages involves, programming languages is, is nowadays are mostly high level languages. They are closer to human language. So low levels fa uh, faster, high levels slower, the disk size can be much smaller, um, whereas high level program takes up much more space. The readability is lower, which makes it more difficult, whereas this is, the readability is higher, making it easier. Okay, so you can see how they're referenced. So there are hundreds of languages targeted at different aspects, some of the major uh, programming languages include but Pascal, C, Java, 
PHP, um, Ruby, and Python. And you can see how each different code has um, a slightly different way to write how is uh, how you would say hello world. So the programming uh, languages looks a bit difficult to learn. So I start from the basics and then we'll uh, look at some more. So through every program language has its own set of terms and syntax. It shares some uh, it shares some common features with its counterparts. If you understand these features though, you can create scripts using a programming language. Mm -hmm. Could you please read it and if you have any questions, you can ask me about it. Oh, it's complicated. Hold on. Don't do it. Don't mind. Let me demonstrate how to do it. Work. I find it less difficult to tackle. Okay, so let's go back to the chapter. So we're looking at different types of uh, structure. So it's explained very well. Look at the sequential structure here, where um, the iteration and the conditional structure. So you've got something which has got to make up a decision, a cycle, and a simple flowing task. So let's look tech, uh, t at technical terms and syntax. So variables. Variables are the storage location in programming. 
The concepts of variables is also applied to algebraic equations in maths. So we could say x is 2, y is 3, x plus y would be 5. So in the above example, the value 2 is given to this x and 3 is to the y. So if we're doing uh, two letters and we add them together, we obviously get a numerical number, which is 5. So we can look at arithmetic symbols. You might see this sometimes on maths, which I write that... Um, Instead of doing a division sign, you have a um, forward slash, or instead of a times, you have an asterisk. They refer to the plus, minus, multiplication, and division signs. Note that the mathematical symbol and arithmetic operators differ in for multiplication and division. You can also see that we've got a relationship between values, common, um, so we've got equals to, not equal to, greater, smaller than, greater than or equal to, smaller than or equal to. So let's look at some input, uh, sorry, input and output. So the term input refers to the manual assignment of valuable values to variables. The term output means to display the values of variables on the screen. So for example, we can have an input base, an input height, area, would be base times height divided by 2 and would give us an output area. To show the above is an equation of calculating the area of triangles. Area of triangles is base times height divided by 2. So by assigning base to uh, base and 4 to height and the result area is, uh, equals 10 is calculated. Repeat commands, terms for repeat, uh, for repeat and loop, refer to iterations. So, in the above scripts, uh, the value of 20 is assigned to x, followed by a repetitive command x minus 1. So that would be 19, 18, 17. The program ends when the value of x is equal to 10, until x is equal to 10. Conditions, they indicate that the computer performs a certain action only if the criterion is fulfilled. Terms such as if have conditions. For example, input x, if x is less than five, then y um, two. So then we would end. In the above example, if the value of x is greater than uh, five, assign two to the variable y. The commands are executed only if the condition is satisfied. You can set more than one criterion per program, so you can have multiple if statements. In the above, if the value of x is greater than 5, assign 2 to y. Otherwise, the value of x is smaller than 5, assign 10 to y. So this is something which we can do to write scripts. And so we've got useful tools, um, visual programming language, uh, languages tools. So there are various visual programming languages for kids to learn these concepts of programming. Simply drag the stack um, the stack and default blocks there and you can create a simple animations of games. So you've got Scratch, App Inventor, Kodu and Alice. Now we're going to be using Scratch, uh, sorry, Turtle Academy, um, which we're going to look at in the next video. Um, from this, read, go through and read the PowerPoint and then um, take your time with completing some questions and the worksheets.